Chicago and architecture. Those two words go together like peanut butter and jelly or arroz and pollo. When you think about Chicago, what buildings come to mind? The Sears Tower, the Hancock Center, but where did it all begin? That's what we're gonna talk about in today's video. So keep watching. What's good everybody? Welcome back to my channel. It's Lewis from GoLewisGusto.com. If you're new here, I am a travel filmmaker based in Chicago. Today, we're gonna be taking a tour looking at some of the oldest buildings in Chicago, built in the late 19th century and early 20th century. We'll hit a couple of the highlights and I'll share some facts and cool stories from the Chicago School of Architecture. But before we get started, I have a quiz for you. What is the Chicago School? Is it A, a group of fish swimming in the Chicago River? Is it B, an old schoolhouse on the west side that teaches kids from all across Chicago land? Or is it C, a group of architects that came together that shared a common vision and principles to rebuild the city of Chicago after the Great Fire of 1871? So a few things happened to create the Chicago School of Architecture. The first catalyst, of course, was the Great Fire of 1871 that destroyed most of the city. Now because Chicago was a major metropolitan area and still growing very fast, there was an immediate need to rebuild the city quickly. So a bunch of architects from across the country came here. They had their own shared principles and visions for what Chicago would look like. We'll start with their Manhattan building, the world's oldest skyscraper with a purely skeletal frame. What's also special about the Manhattan building is that it was designed by William LeBaron Jenny, who is considered the father of the modern skyscraper. The Manhattan building was finished in 1891, 100 years before Michael Jordan would bring Chicago its first NBA championship. What do Burnham, Root, Hollibird, and Roche all have in common? Well, they're all Chicago legends. Architects that all have buildings on Dearborn and Van Buren, which is one of the spots that you'll want to come to see these historic Chicago school buildings. We've got the Fisher Building, the Monadnock, and the Old Colony Building, all of which were built before 1900. I'm standing in front of the Monadnock Building, which is actually two buildings in one, and I actually just realized this myself a few weeks ago. One of the dopest things about all of these buildings is that no matter where you're standing, they look great. So unlike neoclassical and gothic, Chicago school architecture doesn't really refer to a single style of building, but rather a set of shared principles and common vision that these great architects shared for pushing Chicago and putting it on the map again. They revolutionized building construction with these new materials like steel, elevators, and terracotta facades. So if you love these Chicago buildings like I do, please drop a like below, and don't forget to drop a comment on your favorite building in this video. One of the most famous elements to come out of the Chicago School is the Chicago window, which is a three panel window with a gigantic center one that's immovable, two smaller panels on either side to open up and let in fresh air. This was revolutionary for the time because it allowed more natural light to come into these office buildings. Unfortunately, during the 1950s and 60s, many of these original Chicago School buildings were demolished to make way for taller structures. But luckily for us, a bunch of preservation has stepped up to the plate to preserve the remaining Chicago landmarks, essentially saving Chicago's history of architecture.
So what lessons can we learn from the Chicago School of Architects? Well, Louis Sullivan was quoted as saying, form follows function. What he meant by that was the outside of a building should reflect its inner purpose, which I think is a pretty good metaphor for life. These architects had a very strong vision. They wanted Chicago to be unique. They didn't want it to be another New York or Paris. After the fire, they kind of had carte blanche to push this city forward and really give it a unique character. I also think that's a great metaphor for life. You don't want to be part of the crowd. You want to stand out, do your own thing. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned a lot. If you made it to the end, please drop a like. And if you are new here, subscribe to join the Gusto Gang. I make Chicago films and travel films every Monday and Thursday. And I would really appreciate if you shared this video with your best friend. Have a great rest of your day. I truly hope it's a great one. And of course, as always, I will see you in the next video. Peace out. Today we're gonna look at a few of the greatest buildings from the late 19th century and earliest 20th, earliest. The first part was built in uh, I don't know when and the second part was built I don't know when. <laughs> yeah, that's perfect. That is perfect. Okay. <laughs> Examples of Chicago School architecture. You're gonna wanna head to Dearborn and a train is passing. So, there's Gothic and there's Neoclassical. Okay, right on this block. What else did you want me to say? <laughs> Oh, and when you're, when you're looking at the Fisher Building, make sure you take a closer look because there are fish constructed right into the front of the building.